The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the QATV staff or board of directors. QATV, in compliance with FCC regulations, is prohibited from exercising control over the content of independent, member-produced public access programming. Welcome to FOSA once again. Every week we bring you a special edition um, from our show. This week we are honored to have special guests from Dove Inc, Executive Director, Senior Management, Sue Chandler, and we have Jennifer Yerden Bolton um, as the Senior Manager of Education and Prevention, and of course my co-host. Hello, hi, so. <laughs> And we are here to introduce Dove and um, all the wonderful work that Dove does uh, for the Norfolk County and to or, uh, prevent domestic violence. Welcome, Sue. Welcome, Jen. Thank, Thank you, you, Isha and Sophie. Thank you. Um, it's wonderful to be back. We were on the show. Um, I was here about a year and a half ago, and I think Jen's been on. And it's wonderful to be back. We really appreciate the invitation to join you. Thank you. Uh, we're thrilled to, to be here to talk about Dove and the variety of programs and services that we offer. Um, I'm going to read our mission statement, which we have posted here and is available on our website, which I'll uh, tell you all in a moment. Dove stands for Domestic Violence Ended. Dove is committed to partnering with diverse communities families and individuals impacted by domestic violence. We promote hope, healing, safety, and social change by providing a broad range of preventive and responsive services. Dove was established actually originally out of the Quincy Mayor's Commission on Women um, back in 1977-1978 and originally the very first shelter um, opened on the grounds of Quincy City Hospital uh, in the nursing building. Uh, the father at St. Boniface Church organized some of his um, church community in Germantown and they ran the hotline for a while, group of volunteers. The shelter opened uh, at Quincy City Hospital Labor Day weekend in 1978 and immediately after that, legal services were also provided to assist survivors to navigate the court system. It was right around the time that restraining orders became available in Massachusetts. So those were the very first programs that Dove offered. And now we have, uh, as the mission says, a broad range of services for victims and survivors, and we're also working more and more toward community education and ultimately prevention because we would really like to prevent um, and end domestic and dating violence. So Jen is going to start by talking about our emergency shelter and hotline. Sure. So we have, uh, as Sue mentioned, several uh, programs at Dove and we're likely most well known for our shelter program. So we've uh, had our shelter for um, about 37 years. Um, and it's in an undisclosed location uh, in Quincy and that's for the safety of the families that are staying there. And so oftentimes we have people coming from all the way across the country uh, that are seeking safety from a relationship that has been um, potentially um, physically violent, emotionally abusive, there may have been threats. This person has not allowed the relationship to end. And so oftentimes people um, are looking to go into hiding um, and are able to do that within our shelter. So um, we also serve many people right from this area, from Quincy and the surrounding towns. Uh, and people really are able to stay with us until their 
able to find a safe place to move on to. So we serve men and women, uh, folks can bring their children with them, and we are welcoming of anyone that's a survivor uh, of domestic violence. So we have lots of services for folks in the shelter. We have counseling, we have support groups. Each person in the shelter has their own advocate, which is part of what I do, uh, is meet with folks one-on-one, -on -one, find out a little bit about what's brought them into the shelter, how can we provide them some emotional support, uh, and also come up with a safety plan for them so that they can move on from our program and feel safe. So, you wanna talk about some of our other programs? Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, our uh, shelter is full every night of the year. We have six bedrooms and 18 beds, and our shelter, like many around the state, are full all the time. So. It can be difficult to get in, unfortunately. And uh, certainly, um, shelter's not the perfect fit for everyone. So some folks who aren't able to get into our shelter or who, who may not be looking to do that uh, can access help in what we call our community services office. That is located in the Wollaston neighborhood of Quincy. We are on Old Colony Ave and um, by calling our phone number, which is the community phone number is 617-770-4065 and dialing extension 22, you can leave a message for somebody if you're looking for services. Uh, let us know when's a safe time to call you back and then somebody will call back and learn about what you're looking for, for help or what, what is the caller looking for, for assistance and then we will set up an appointment and the community services uh, staff people, what we call community advocates, do one-on-one -on -one individual, what we call supportive counseling. They're not clinicians, uh, but supportive counseling and also education and support groups. So um, by supportive counseling, we mean that we will listen to what's happening in the situation and offer information about uh, what we understand from other survivors and victims, as well as research to be true around the issue of domestic or dating violence or stalking, and help, help the person who's visiting with us figure out what exactly are their goals, and then how can they move toward those. Uh, we do a lot of work around planning for safety for that survivor and their children and can offer information about other services they may be looking for, and also let them know about services that are available for the abusive partner. Uh, there are a number of services in the Quincy and greater Boston area. Um, our community advocates also <coughs> offer educational and support groups, which is where a group of people come together. Usually the groups meet on a weekly basis, Jen actually runs one of those groups. Would you mm -hmm. like to talk more about that? Sure, so we have a, a wonderful group um, of women that have been uh, coming to Dove for some time and have um, really grown in friendship and grown in healing together. Uh, and then we also have a group that's open to folks that are sort of just starting in this process and are looking for some support around what their uh, experience is because Domestic violence can be so isolating. Oftentimes people feel like they're the only one that has experienced this and that maybe it's their fault. And so sometimes it can be really helpful to meet with other folks that have had that very similar experience uh, and can kind of come together and support each other. So we have a couple of support groups that run out of Quincy and then we also have a support group, a newer group that runs out of uh, Norwood Hospital. And so that's been a way for us to sort of offer services to folks that maybe don't live quite as close to Quincy, so. And how long do people stay at your shelter, like at an average time, like sure. a person? How long do they stay there? So as you might know, there's, there's quite the housing crisis um, now in our state and, and really across the country. And uh, unfortunately, folks are staying in the shelter for, for much longer than, than is desirable. And so, um, sometimes that can be six or more months um, that folks are with us and uh, our goal is to move them on to hopefully some transitional housing and then uh, to permanent housing. So there, there are an, uh, an unfortunate amount of obstacles, but if people are able to 
um, s stay in the system and sort of work through some of these moves and some of these programs, there can be a really great um, safe and stable end result. What I understand from Dub is it builds confidence for all domestic violence uh, uh, people. Is that correct? Sure. So the focus Survivors of our work is empowerment. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if we were to step in and sort of take over making decisions and tell people what to do and give advice, we're really taking over control of that person's life and that is very similar to what they've been experiencing in an abusive relationship is someone that's controlling them someone that's making all those decisions for them mm -hmm. and so our goal is to as sue mentioned support people to listen to offer uh, options and resources so that people can gain their power back uh, and and they can begin that healing process by having that agency to um, to move in whatever direction feels right for them. So do you like uh, find jobs for them or for the kids? What happens to those people? Like how do you help them out? Like if they want to get a job or they want to get an education, uh, what kind of resources do you have that are available to? What we, uh, we try to collaborate with other organizations in the Quincy community that have a specialization in that area. So we certainly can link people to um, Quincy Community Action and the Quincy Career Center. Um, our staff do assist people with housing applications, um, assist them in putting together the documentation they'll need, figure out what different types of places they're eligible for. We assist people with um, creating or strengthening their resume. Staff people might do role plays about what an interview would be like. Um, we uh, refer them to the Interface Social Services Career Closet for professional attire for um, interviews. So we would do a lot of support and help them figure out where also to go in to a place on. that specializes, right. And, um, and for example, we do have a, a woman who recently left our shelter. She was able to get a, a fast food um, restaurant job and assist herself through getting through school um, to become an esthetician, a, a beauty esthetician. And um, she's moved into a transitional living program and is now looking for a job um, closer to what she's been in training for. So um, our staff will support along those lines. I want to also talk about some other places where people can get Dove services. Mm. Um, we have, in addition to the hotline, which is anonymous and 24 hours a day, uh, folks can halt, call the hotline for information, for a listening ear, um, to get um, to find out if there is an opening in the shelter, which there may well not be, but to get connected to our community services if they wish. That 24-hour hotline number is 617-471-1234. And we have a toll-free number, which is 888-314-DOVE, which is 3683. And also on the website, there's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Our website is www.dovema.org, so D-O-V-E-M-A dot O-R-G. Um, in addition to the shelter, hotline, and community services, we have two staff who work in collaboration with six different police departments. So Maureen and Kathleen are on site at different police departments at different times of the week. We work closely with Quincy Police Department, Randolph and Holbrook and Milton. Um, actually Kathleen serves Milton, Randolph and Holbrook and she speaks Haitian Creole. So particularly in the Milton and Randolph communities, there's a strong Haitian community, and she's able to connect with people if they prefer to speak in Haitian Creole. Um, Maureen works with Quincy Police Department, also Norwood and Dedham. And as Jen mentioned, um, she is running the, the support group out of Norwood Hospital, which happens once a week. And by calling Dove's office or hotline, you can get information about the support groups in the Quincy office or in the Norwood office. And Maureen is also on site at the Dedham District Court 
on Monday mornings to assist people who are applying for restraining orders and on site at the Quincy District Court on Friday mornings they have a dedicated restraining order session. So if somebody uh, were seeking a, an order of protection from an abuser, uh, you would go to the court to apply for that restraining order. And uh, Maureen and Kathleen, after the police go out on a domestic violence call, they will contact the victim at that home and just ask if the person has questions about what happened, do they understand what the police did. Sometimes um, victims in the home get frustrated with the police. Uh, maybe the neighbor called, they didn't call, or maybe they wish the police had done more or something different. And so our staff try to explain exactly what the police role is, but also let them know about how they can get additional services through Dove if they are wishing for that. And we also have staff attorneys who can actually assist with the, the restraining orders, but also information about uh, divorce, custody, child support, a number of issues related to domestic violence in the legal system. So a variety of ways that um, people can get help. Everything we do is free and confidential. Again, the hotline is anonymous. Uh, our other services are confidential. Uh, we take that very seriously. We understand um, the concerns that survivors have, obviously, about um, anybody finding out that they're seeking assistance from off us, and, and we work very hard to ensure their safety and help them figure out how to be as safe as possible. Um, more along the lines of the education and prevention, that's Jen's specialty. So I'll pause and let Jen speak. Sure, so uh, another part of, of my role at Dove is to run our teen dating violence prevention program, which is uh, my favorite part of, of what I do. Um, and so we are actively involved in some of the local high schools. Uh, North Quincy, Quincy High School, Randolph, Holbrook, as well as um, many others around Norfolk County. Uh, so we go into the schools and we uh, work with an identified uh, group of student leaders. They go through a training on domestic violence where they learn all about the different types of abuse, about the cycle, about warning signs, and most importantly, how to be an active bystander. If they see something like this happening in their school, how can they step in and do something in a safe way? And so those students are trained. They are then identified as the peer leaders and the uh, peer mentors within the school. Uh, and so we know that students don't necessarily go and talk to their parents first. If, it abuse, if a relationship is abusive, they don't necessarily call a hotline or talk to a guidance counselor but they go to their friends and they, they go to their peers. And so our goal is to have peers in the school that are trained, know how to respond in a safe and effective and supportive way um, that's not victim blaming. And so often outside of our work at Dove, we hear people talk about why does she stay? Why does the victim not leave the relationship? And through some of this training at a young age are able to help people understand why it is that this abuse happens, why people stay, and how to actually be supportive so that someone can leave if, if it's safe and if they want to. So uh, we do lots of things throughout the school year. We uh, do presentations to all the freshmen in the classroom. So any freshman um, that goes through Quincy Public Schools has a presentation from Dove on what is an abusive relationship, what can you do if you are experiencing something like that, how can you get help? Um, and how can you possibly identify some warning signs, some red flags that might be coming up uh, so that we can sort of prevent this type of relationship from happening? So some of the, uh, the, the warning signs that we talk a lot about uh, can be things that sort of might not seem abusive uh, at first. And so some of those can be uh, someone that's buying a lot of gifts for their partner really early on in a relationship. There's lots of emotional attachment saying, I love you, I, I want to marry you, I want to have children with you. If it's out of high school, let's move in together and get married. And sometimes those things seem really great and seem really exciting. And mm -hmm. so um, we really encourage people when there are red, some red flags like that to 
keep those in mind and to take things slowly. Um, if the relationship is healthy, things will not become abusive. There will not be control. Um, but if there are those warning signs and the relationship happens really quickly, it can be really, really difficult to end it. Uh, it can be um, uh, because of the isolation, because of sometimes the um, lowering of the person's self-esteem, it can be really hard to end a relationship once um, someone has moved in with the person or has had a child with them. And so um, knowing those warning signs can be very helpful at a, a young age. So what, what you're saying is when somebody is in a relationship or the, it's too quickly, there's something wrong. Is that what you're saying? N not always, okay. Okay. Um, but we consider that to be a, what Go we on. call a red flag. And okay. so we really encourage people, if you're seeing some of those red flags, to take note of them. Right. Um, one of the best ways to um, determine whether a relationship may become abusive or not is to take things slowly, um, to really get to know this person. And if over a long period of time, there are not indicators of control, of jealousy, of manipulation, of isolation, lowering someone's self-esteem, then Go for it. maybe this person had great intentions and just you know wanted Not to. A little yeah. Yeah, 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 sure. And so, absolutely. But it, we want people to note that's note a warning these signs, sign, right? Um, and and to really take things take things slowly, and it, it takes a long time to really get to know mm -hmm. someone. So what a like strong fans, message. Like that's wonderful. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's really nice. Now, the dedication that both Sue and Jen, you have for Dub, what, because it requires a lot of dedication for this kind of work as well as for the organization to build up, I think it's 37 years. Um, I read on the website mm -hmm. that it was 37 years. So it's, um, it's wonderful now. What makes you go on every day? What is it? something that experienced or um, you know how do you send this message to the survivors that you're the strong pillars of Dove? Well I think actually the survivors send that message to us honestly. Um, I can't say clearly any specific thing that brought me into this work. Um, I've long been active in women's rights work and um, just happened to, to come to Dove after having worked in Boston with community health centers around domestic violence. And I think what inspires me and keeps me here is that I have a job that is very, very meaningful. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a great team of people at Dove. Everyone cares so much about this issue. Mm -hmm. And when we hear stories about somebody who feels like their life was saved because they were able to get help. It's incredibly moving and... Um, gratifying. Yes, incredibly gratifying. Yeah, similarly, I, I, it's, it's wonderful to both be able to, in my role, respond directly to folks that are experiencing abuse, that maybe are still living with their partner, are, are very afraid and, and are looking for that support. Um, and to be able to, to be there for someone like that in that moment, and then to also, in my role, be able to work on prevention. And so it, it for me, is, is a, um, feels very well-rounded um, to be able to meet with people directly that are affected, but also to do some work. Dove has really taken a stance to, uh, how can we prevent this from continuing to happen? Uh, it is so, so prevalent in our society, and statistics say one out of four women will experience an abusive relationship. And so uh, instead of just providing more and more counseling and more shelter space, what can we do to stop this? And so uh, Dove has really invested a lot in education and prevention and working with younger and younger populations. Uh, we are uh, have a... a a nice relationship with uh, Germantown Neighborhood Center. Today I was um, meeting with their staff about how can we talk to your elementary school students um, that are coming to summer camp and talk about healthy friendships and how your friendships when you're in elementary school and the qualities that make up your best friend should be those same qualities that will make up your future partner. And so uh, I, I feel very passionate about, about 
this work and about Dove and, and uh, love that we focus so much on, on the future and, and as you mentioned, hope and social change. Confidence, hope, social change. Mm -hmm. I love the survivor story. She has something, you know, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, Sue, would you also mention which um, cities that you, uh, Dove is in? Yes. Please. I am going to read, because I don't know this all right off the top of my head, but if you go to our website, you can download materials. This is the cover of our annual report from last year. Um, and there is a map on our website of the cities and towns uh, where we primarily, um, what we call our catchment area. So those are in alphabetical order, Avon, Braintree, Canton, Cohasset, Dedham, Hingham, Hull, Holbrook, Milton, Norwood, Quincy, Randolph, Sharon, Stoughton, Walpole, Westwood, and Weymouth. And I wanted to um, talk a little bit about the fact that Jen, um, she mentioned that she loves to do the community education and has done some work with Germantown. Uh, Jen or a member of our staff are happy to come to any business office and talk about like maybe a brown bag lunch that employees want to hear about it, churches. Um, again, we collaborate closely with Interfaith, um, Quincy Community Action, Father Bill's, other places, and um, can come into healthcare settings and talk with healthcare providers about how to ask about domestic violence during patient visits. We can do stuff at the library. We'll come to book groups. Any group that wants to have us, we are happy to come and talk about the work that we do. And what we firmly believe is that uh, domestic violence is an issue that affects every single one of us, and every single one of us has a role to play in ending domestic violence. So it doesn't mean that you have to work at Dove to do that. Um, there are things that you can do in your church, or in your neighborhood, or in your family, and uh, we can help think about that. And I think back to, Isha, your question about what keeps us going in this is we really feel like we are a place that has expertise. Our staff um, does have some special knowledge about some of these issues, but all of us live in our society. As I said, everyone has a role, and people everywhere, every day, are doing stuff around domestic violence, and it's honestly the community support. So many people want to help, and we get so much help from different um, people do donation drives for us. We have a phenomenal holiday assistance program to get gifts for the folks, the families that we work with. Um, Campanelli and Associates, working with State Street in North Quincy, hosted us for our amazing holiday assistance space last year. We get support um, from all sorts of community businesses. And I, I wish I could list them all, honestly, but there are so many different places that are um, supportive, lend their staff for um, you know, service days or um, do projects in their own um, business places. Can you think of some examples of some of the support we've gotten from the community, Jen? We, we have such a great relationship with so many um, agencies. The, the police department is hugely supportive to us. Um, most oftentimes, people that come to Dove have had a great experience with the Quincy Police Department. And um, I think we, we uh, have grown our relationships with a lot of people in the community so that people don't see this as, this isn't my business, this is you know between these two folks and I'm going to stay out of it and through sort of infiltrating all of these different areas we have um, helped people to realize their their role in ending this and so uh, another sort of small initiative that we had uh, recently was training salon professionals um, and so we were at a couple salons in Quincy and how can we help the salon professionals to recognize some of the vic some of the signs of domestic violence in that that's a place that um, oftentimes women go uh, without cool. their partners and uh, can talk to that to that person and so we really want uh, 
everyone in the community to be prepared for how can I be supportive and then how can I refer someone to Dove? That is so nice, like something that is helpful to everyone and to find out what the, what the points are like to, for the domestic violence because I never knew, like as you were saying about, it, even about, uh, you know, when children get into, into programs or, or, you know, what, when they become too overwhelming, you know, mm -hmm. when a relationship. It's really sure. interesting. It's so helpful for you guys to do something for our community, really. And it's a nice way to start off when they're young to focus and, you know, to train them, which, uh, which is amazing, like really nice, something yeah. to yeah. do. And if folks were looking to become involved, we do, um, especially around our fundraising events, we have event committees. So every fall we have a, a traditional gala called Harvesting Hope. Um, this year in 2015, it's on Friday, October 30th. And we're just now organizing a group of volunteers who will assist with getting auction items for the silent auction and the live auction, getting sponsorships, talking it up among their friends, uh, agreeing to be a table host, table captain. In the spring, we have a great event called Divas Dance for Women, and it's a women's dance party, basically women helping women. Um, uh, there's a buffet, light or I mean heavy hors d'oeuvres, and a huge dance floor and a phenomenal DJ. And uh, similarly, we have an event committee to help us get ready for that. And then um, again, in your own um, networks and places, we're happy to think of ways that people can bring the message right um, right into your own place. It's such a pleasure to have Sue and Jen. It's an honor, really. And as we see that domestic violence is a real cause, it's a real issue. And these are the stalwarts of Dove, and Dove organization, Dove Inc., is providing and helping survivors over the years and hope to carry on. So we hope to support in every way we can to spread the word and thank you once again, Sue. Thank you once again, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.